with Carrie as she's gonna now teach us how to do a comprehensive shin box extreme 90-90 position to each particular side as she's made progressions in her training system. She definitely wanted to add this equation into pe people's training regimes, particularly right now as we're all sitting for long periods of time. So allow her to now coach us through this particular shin box or 90-90 position with our apprentice or I guess our other um, client, if you will, our friend that's actually getting some coaching from us in particular for a hip region issue. Okay, so go ahead, Trayvon and Carrie. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> we're going to be doing a shin box 90-90 and we're getting into this position just to earn some extreme end ranges of our external and our internal rotation for our hips. So if we are beginning seated on the floor, we are essentially going to be bringing our legs down to our sides in a 90 degree angle. And as we're doing this, we wanna have control and intention with our movement. So making sure that we are aligned in our posture for shoulders back, we have some tension created through the core. And as we are turning the opposite direction, we're not just gonna flop our way back down, we are going to move nice and slow and controlled. So if you want to move the opposite direction. Good stuff. Yeah, better. Good stuff. So when we are teaching as trainers, Carrie, what are the tension points we want to build or what are the major points we want to get across here? in the sequence of what we've learned thus far and what we know thus far for the importance of alignment and postural control. Right now he wants to be in a retracted position where particularly? Shoulder blades, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so is arm position, is that helping that? Or is it kind of it, fighting? It's kind it? of helping it. Like right. if I come yeah. out, it'll be a little yeah. better. Like, like this, yeah. it helps me pack my scaps. Which is good. But if I go like this, then they pop out. Right, so he knows that, but what happens to most of us, people are gonna do this. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest thing that we could help people with this? And you want to be intentional. And he goes to blend that next movement. What should happen to that front external extreme position leg? It should stay on the ground. What he should be learning is to try to earn that tension point or that movement capacity out of the leg that's behind him. So start first. Yeah. Okay. And keep tension One on that time. front leg. Yeah. Then he's actually activating and being an intentional control of that set sequence or system. Mm -hmm. As opposed to what you mentioned, which is the flopping component. So we're just gonna give a client a cue like that. So now go ahead and help him with his quad with his cues. So if he's gonna get movement, what's the first thing you're gonna cue him on? So we're still maintaining our shoulder position, yeah. still locking back and down, right. creating tension through the core, and then you're gonna be lifting or one leg to start as you slowly roll through. Right, now when you say one leg, which leg? The back leg. Yes, yes. awesome, <laughs> okay. Remember, when we're helping a client or clients, they may not be as proficient as people like us, mm -hmm. where they understand what you're saying. And maybe you blended them into this set section, because of course, when will we include exercises like this? Is this something that we start clients with, or is this something that we would add in you know, they've made progressions in their training. They understand the foundation of movement and then the yeah. Right, so we're gonna use this a little later as opposed to right away. So they may have an idea of what those blends or what those cues look like, but they're not gonna be as, you know, educated or experienced as us people. Yeah. So we'll have to just use those simple cues that they can stay attached to or they have built, a, you know, a habit of confidence of understanding them. So that's one of the things that we can help them out with. So we just want to make sure we're very explicit and clear on those set cues, okay? Um, so when we get that particular exercise, uh, or when we do that particular exercise, what are the major benefits that we get out of it? Well, we're working through well, end range of your motion for hips. So you're working through that, creating tension through the core. So we're actually going to help build some abs. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're getting core particular activation and it's extreme positions for the hip capsule, allowing the hip capsule to move freely and more expressively, if you will, okay? And we're earning more core activation over a time under tension centigrade. And now that he's explored those end ranges of motion, his body's had 
some form of proprioception or intentional positioning there before. So if he ends up there in a aggressive acute manner, he's not gonna get injured as likely as if he just kind of fell into that position. It's also gonna alleviate all that tension point he's feeling here. Probably because he's been sitting for a long period of time. So a great exercise recommended by Kerry here to help us get more hip mobility for our clients, in particular my friend here is having some hip issues.